Hey all, it's Matt, your average gamer. This is one of my more informative videos and a surprising one at that. For this video, I'll be going over several different high level mage builds and some incantations too, while showing slides later on that explains what you should be using if you have max stats. I will also show you different powerful builds to crush bosses at a high level as a caster. Starting here, we use Night Comet, as you'll see this highlighted early on. We will show the late game build for it later in this video. Before I continue though, a quick word for those who want to support the channel. You can now become a member and you'll get an extra mini build every week too. I'm doing more things with the membership now so that should be pretty fun if you want to join. And if you see links for ExpressVPN in the description below, it's the amazing VPN service I've been using lately. Works really well for keeping your browsing safe and it's something I'm happy to finally be using. Right, now we're going to get to the really good stuff and next up is Morgoth. Now for Morgoth we chose to use Burno Flame and the Golden Order Seal which at 99 Faith and Intelligence will beat out the Giant Seal's damage. This is only by a couple percentage points but it's good to have one Universal Seal for everything. For this setup I used Burno Flame, Fire Scorpion Charm, Godfrey Icon, Ritual Swords Talisman, and the Phlox Canvas Talisman along with the Fire Tier. Morgoth would end up disappearing in just a matter of seconds in a fairly easy fight on New Game Plus 7. Burnal Flame is the really powerful incantation, the fire incantation you get from the Fire Giant's Remembrance. If you haven't picked this up or used it yet, I suggest using it. It's one of the most fun incantations to use in the game. You'll have an absolute blast while using it. It's definitely something that you're going to want to add to your arsenal, especially if you're a faith build. Now it's time to talk about Night Comet, as there's something important to note here. After testing this several times at Gatefront, I came up with the same numbers, and the Staff of Loss, because of its absurd 30% boost, will beat Prince of Death's Staff by around 3%. So basically, when you're using the Prince of Death's Staff with the Staff of Loss in the offhand, you're going to always get 3% less damage than if you're using two Staffs of Loss, and obviously the main one you're casting with would be fully upgraded. This here is just to show real quick that my stats have the maximum amount that you would need for both the Prince of Death staffs and the Staff of Loss, and the Staff of Loss will always beat it because of that absurd 30% damage boost. Next up, we got a little goofy with the Fire Giant. At high levels, you can do pretty much anything you want to do, and it certainly shows. For this, I elected to use the Giant Magic Bubble to see if I could get good damage out of something so simple. Turns out I could, as after buffs and Terra Magica, the first hit ended up being around 10,000 damage. After that, things got a little difficult, as the casting time certainly took a minute. This is very slow to use. However, it goes to show the ridiculous power of being max or high level. No matter what you do, you'll do it well. Even with me taking extra hits and getting beat up a bit here, it didn't even really matter. The bubble does amazing damage with the Prince of Death staff, which will power up the majority of spells with its insane 448 scaling. For the record, that's nearly a hundred higher than the majority of pure intelligence staves in the game. It really shows. By the way, everything's going to be timestamped in the description below, including the different high level faith and intelligence builds that I ended up putting in here. On top of that, I'll also timestamp the slides later because we're going to go over everything. We're going to talk about all the boosts, all the math involved, and why the Prince of Death staff and the Golden Order seal are so good at max level how more or less you're going to get to a point where you can just end up using whatever spells you choose and you can turn it into something good based off the scaling by itself. That's the big selling point here, is that the scaling on these is so high than whatever you're using versus any boost, it's going to beat that, and on top of that, it's going to do even more additional damage. So if you're really up there in terms of levels, at that point, you're going to use the Golden Order Seal and the Prince of Death staff for pretty much 95% of what you're, you're doing in the game. And I'm going to show you later on in slides, basically the only exceptions, and there are some exceptions, a couple surprising ones at least for me as far as scaling goes. But besides those exceptions, the Golden Order Seal and the Prince of Death staff you can pretty much rock those two, use whatever incantations and spells you want to use, and can completely destroy and obliterate the majority of bosses in the game with an assortment of spells and incantations. After having fun with uh, running around with the bubble, phase two went a little bit better. Even though I did continue to take extra hits, 
I chose to change it up here as I would opt to use a Duelist Moon Blade and see the damage I could get on that. After, of course, we sent off one last Magic Bubble, which apparently is really fun to use. <laughs> Once again, though, the damage on a Duelist Moon Blade is quite good, with me not worrying about much else since the Prince of Death staff will make almost any sorcery you use overpowered. It does feel borderline broken at these levels, but that's not a bad thing if you're just looking for a chill time. And down goes the Fire Giant in short order here, don't worry, he's going to go down shortly, and then we're going to end up defeating him basically with Bubbles and the Duelist Moonblade. Turned out to be a really epic battle in the end. A new game plus 7, he's got around 64,000 HP, so that can be a little bit of a challenge. But even so, you don't feel too threatened when you're at this level. We've got a lot of HP, and we're dishing out a ton of damage to boot. I do really enjoy fighting the Fire Giant. I feel like it does turn into an epic battle fairly often, but once you get to know his moveset, because he's so slow, a lot of his attacks are easily avoidable. That last clip, by the way, we basically had the same basic Night Comet setup, which I'll show later, but it's time to show something truly impressive. Dragon incantations at max levels. They're absurdly good. The Golden Order seal does not beat the Dragon Communion seal when you're using dragon incantations. This we chose to use Glintstone Breath, or whatever it's called, the Magic Breath that we're using here, and we can end up destroying the Godskin duos, almost their entire health bar, combined health bar, using this, because the Dragon Communion Seal is really powerful at high levels and has that extra 15% boost. And this would end up shredding them completely and making our lives a lot easier. Now, as far as the Dragon Communion Seal, it will hit an impressive 415 scaling, 415, with 99 Arcane and Faith. Only three shy of the Golden Order Seal, but it also has a 15% boost to Dragon Communion Incantations, so this is definitely the way to go. Keep that in mind if you're using Dragon Communion Incantations, the Golden Order Seal will not be the answer for you. The answer is always going to be the Dragon Communion Seal. Having close to the same scaling on top of a 15% boost, you can do the math there. You're going to get a lot more damage out of the Dragon Communion Seal. Let me show my high level Dragon Communion setup. We're using the Dragon Communion Seal and the Jellyfish Shield. And then we're going to be using the Phlox Canvas Talisman, Ritual Swords Talisman, Magic Scorpion Charm because we were using the Magic One, the Roar Medallion, which I think they fixed now and will boost breath attacks, and then we have the Magic Tear as well. Next up, it's time to show Comet Azur and the Prince of Death Staff. Comet Azur is really impressive with the Prince of Death Staff, as you'll want to use Golden Vow and at least Terra Magica. You can throw in Howl too, but it's not really needed since we're going to get great damage off the scaling alone. The Tougher Tree Sentinel would end up standing no chance against Common Azure, and we're going to go over my setup here in a minute as well. He gets completely destroyed by the beam here, and we end up completely depleting his entire health bar and taking him down no issues. Again, Common Azure really impressive with the Prince of Death Staff. We're using the Prince of Death Staff, obviously. The Jellyfish Shield, Graven Mass Talisman, Ritual Swords Talisman, Magic Scorpion Charm. I was running Dragon Crest, but you can do the Graven School Talisman for even more damage, the Magic Tier, and the Infinite FP Tier. These clergymen and Malachi, I had something else in mind, as I wanted to show how truly absurd Prince of Death Staff is. After using Loretta's Mastery to start, I switched back to something as simple as Glintstone Pebble, which still does amazing damage with our 448 scaling on our staff. This is no doubt impressive, as I started to realize at high and max levels, whatever we do, we'll be crushing it easily. Everything is a lot easier in general, we, with nothing giving too much of a challenge, because of the damage we can consistently dish out. Malachi tried to give me some trouble, but with a fairly good amount of HP, and the fact that we were doing solid damage from a range, makes the fight so much simpler. Not too complicated to run Glintstone Pebble at this level because of the scaling we have. Whatever spell you choose, Aside from Night Comet, the Prince of Death staff will up the damage substantially and destroy whatever boss you're facing. On another note, by the way, if you follow to this point and aren't subbed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You're not going to want to miss out on the variety of builds we have, and if you haven't become a member yet, definitely become a member. There's going to be polls for specific builds that you can do for our mini builds, and then I'll be doing around one, maybe even two mini builds per week on some obscure weapons and different things as well if you want to become a member. It's going to be pretty fun. Can't wait. Really excited about that. 
And now it's time to finish off Malakath here in a few minutes. And after that, we're going to go on to Godfrey, Radagon, and Elden Beast. And then we're going to go over all those slides. There's so much to talk about in those. I can't wait for those. Those are timestamped, by the way. Has a lot of information. I did a lot of math for you guys. Figured out a whole bunch of different things. And it's going to be really informative. If you're at a higher max level, it's definitely something that you're going to want to check out and see. Let's get into equipment for this one. Flintstone Pebble Build, Prince of Death Staff, Jellyfish Shield, Graven Mask Talisman, Ritual Swords Talisman, Magic Scorpion Charm, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, and the Magic Tier. I chose to skip Gideon for this video and moved on to Godfrey. For Godfrey, I initially used him as a test dummy, trying to figure out different spells on him. Since I'm on console, still at the current time, although I do have a PC coming on the way and I can't wait, once they're beat, they're beat. You know, I can't go back or cloud save or anything like that as far as I know. So I have to try out different things and then maybe die a couple times and come back. I do this every once in a while. And I ended up deciding to go with Glintstone Ice Craig, which doesn't have the best range, but it does a really good amount of damage with the Prince of Death staff. This resulted in me making phase one relatively short because of the good amount of damage it does and allowing us to build up frost damage as well in the process. He was easy once I decided on a spell and took solid damage all around. The Prince of Death staff once again was showing how scaling can crush different bosses at high levels and give you a well-rounded staff for all things not named Night Comet. Fun at these levels not having to respec and being able to just quickly swap equipment. It makes everything so much easier. Speaking of that, let's get into equipment. For this we have the Prince of Death staff, Jellyfish Shield, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Godfrey Icon, Graven Mass Talisman, and then we had the Magic Tier as well here, and this was the setup we were using for Glintstone Ice Craig. Really powerful spell, even though it doesn't have the best range in the world, it can do a lot of damage. For Radagon, I opted to use Night Comet one last time. He can deflect and see most spells aside from Night Comet, so this makes everything a little bit easier. He can actually be brought to phase or if we're not calling it a phase, the part where he does his slams in just a few casts of Night Comet. Casting Terra Magica immediately when you walk into the arena can make it even easier. Radagon was easily disposed of here, and then we'd be going on to Elden Beast, where I had something else in mind entirely. I wanted to test the true power of being at these levels and being able to utilize all different types of spells, so I picked a really fun sorcery to use on Elden Beast, we ended up going with Rock Blaster. Down goes Radagon, and we are going to be moving on to Elden Beast using the Prince of Death staff. And as I mentioned here, we're going to be using Rock Blaster for the majority of this fight. So at this level, we can use anything, and Rock Blaster is by no means bad, but I wanted to see how much damage it can do on a slow boss like Elden Beast, because you can run it consistently even though it does chew through your FP, and it does damage consistently as well. I was actually shocked at the damage here, as it was literally chewing through his HP bar when I finally got my chance to hit him, even with his 40% magic resistance. This was actually an epic way to fight him, and for me a really fun one too. I had my Night Comet type setup, which I'll show after, but Rock Blaster was mostly all I needed. I figured as long as I stayed close to him and continued to use Rock Blaster on Elden Beast, I'd be able to continue to get a really good amount of damage and ended up doing massive damage to him. The thing about these spells are, everything we use is going to be overpowered as long as we're using the Prince of Death staff and taking advantage of that 448 scaling it has. That's the big selling point of going max or high level. If you're doing PvP meta levels, it makes sense. You know, you have the level 150, level 80, level 125 metas now to give people the option to do PvP, which is why I do a lot of 150 builds. But if you're only doing PvE, don't ever let anyone stop you from leveling up as much as you want and having as much fun as you possibly can. You can always create a second character for PvP or for a challenge anyways, so don't worry too much about leveling stop points if you're a PvE only player. Because all in all, using Rock Blaster with the Prince of Death staff to take down Elden Beast on New Game Plus 7 was probably one of the most enjoyable fights I've had in a very long time. It was really cool just to be able to use this, see how much damage you can get out of this in different spells with the Prince of Death staff, absurdly high scaling. It's time to use Rock Blaster again on Elden Beast and continuing applying pressure to him to try to take down his HP as fastly as we can, 
Now he has around 31,000, I think between 31 and 32,000 on New Game Plus 7, and his resistances are fairly decent with 40% magic resistance, but again, not going to matter much here. The Prince of Death staff is going to carry us through this fight like it is for most fights when you're at max and high levels. Was, I guess you can put it this way, stupid good to run around with Rock Blaster and end up using this on Elden Beast. It's going to be time here shortly to go over all the boosts and slides I made. I made a whole bunch of different slides. We're going to go over everything. As I mentioned, that's timestamp. And then we're going to be going over the Night Comet setup build. And then the stats we have. We did have to move around stats at level 480 to do different seals and staffs. But everything turned out really well. And we have a whole bunch of information for you coming up right here soon. For this setup, we have the Prince of Death Staff and the Jellyfish Shield for Rock Blaster, but if you're running Night Comet, you're going to go with two Staves of Loss because that's the best way to do things, and it does give you the most damage. And then the Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Godfrey Icon because it is chargeable, Grave and Mass Talisman, and then we have the Magic Tier and the Defense Tier as well. Let's take a look at stats. At level 480, as far as sorceries and incantations go, 99 is going to be a big benefit here now as far as weapons go you can pretty much cap everything at 80 that's what i was doing in my previous builds but i did have to move around stats because getting to 99 as far as scaling goes does matter a little bit more these were my stats i used on elden beast here but yeah it gets a little bit more complicated with that but since you're going for max level it's not going to matter anyway and that's what journey we're going on to we were on new game plus seven First things first is Night Comet. Night Comet is the only pure sorcery that the Prince of Death Staff doesn't beat. At 99 Faith and Intelligence, Prince of Death Staff scaling will only beat the Staff of Losses scaling by around 27%, meaning the Staff of Losses 30% boost will beat out the Prince of Death's Night Comet by around roughly 3%. So it's always better to go with two Staffs of Loss when you're running Night Comet look at what it beats and by roughly how much after booster factored in carrying regal scepter by over five percent carrying glint blade staff by eight percent meteorite staff by around 20 percent staff of the guilty by over 16 percent cotton crystal staff by around seven percent crystal staff by the same seven percent gelmer glintstone staff by around 14 percent albinoric staff by around 15 percent Carrying Glintstone Staff by around 14%, Lucette's Glintstone Staff by around 4%, Azur's Glintstone Staff by 16%, Demon Human Staff by a lot at this point, the scaling is really low there, Digger's Staff by around 15%, Academy Glintstone Staff by over 20%, Glintstone Staff by around 25%, and Astrologer's Staff by around 20%. Order Seal doesn't beat when we're factoring incantations here. It will not beat Dragon Communion Seal when using Dragon Incantations as they're fairly close as the Dragon Communion Seal has 415 scaling versus 418 on the Golden Order Seal and it has a 15% boost on Dragon Communion Incantations and then certain healing and weapon buffs that only scale with Faith. 99 Faith and Intelligence, it beats the God Slayer Seal by 2.7%. Giant Seal by 4.2%, Urtree Seal by around 13.8%, Hallmark Seal by 12%, Finger Seal by a lot, Gravelstone Seal by 6%. So all in all, 95% of the time, your best bet is the Prince of Death Staff and the Golden Order Seal at high and max levels. It's almost going to be your go-to for almost all things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as I tried to keep it as informative as possible. Everything is timestamped as well, including the several different builds I used throughout the video as well as the slides too. This ends part three. If you would like to see a part four on obscure weapons, less used weapons at high and max levels, comment below. Become a member now for even more builds. If you're not on the Discord, definitely be sure to join the Discord. There's over 500 people there now. It's been an awesome growing community. And if you're not subbed and you love overpowered PvE builds or Elden Ring content in general, definitely be sure to check out all the content that's on my channel. Be sure to sub. Thanks for watching. As always, I will catch you guys there.